Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, on so many levels, uh, personal hygiene. Both my kids were not potty trained before treatment, mm -hmm. and within treatment, uh, probably about two months after, they were completely potty trained. So that <laughs> saved us a lot of money on pull-ups and diapers and so forth. Um, that that was a huge milestone. That was probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, also, using utensils. My children never use utensils, and now they use a fork and a spoon, and they drink out of a straw, um, a regular cup. That was a huge milestone. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, the affection, you know, and and communicating that they wanted tickles or rub my foot, mommy, or um, I hurt, mommy. You know, things that um, I didn't have the opportunity to understand before because they would cry and I would think, oh my gosh, they have an ear infection, but they can't tell me, or, you know, their arm's broken. I, they can't, how am I going to know this? But now they can point and tell me, and that's such a huge um, transition to understanding what your child is going through and mm -hmm. what they need. It's the first significant treatment that has had so much effectiveness after. Like you, we see the changes that only a family would notice, right. but then the community is noticing, the teachers, their therapists, strangers that don't see us all the time, you know, they're like, oh, gosh, your kids are, they looked right at me, they waved goodbye, that's wonderful, they're pointing, I can't believe how much they're talking. So when you're hearing that unsolicited information, you know as a, as a family member mm. what they went through. Yes, it's working, but look what the community is seeing as well. We did not tell um, the teachers and therapists that work with them on a daily mm. basis because we really wanted honest feedback and unsolicited mm. feedback. So when they say, you know, Jack is really coming a long way in a short time. Look what he did today. He played a game today where he would never play taking turns. Oh, yeah. That was huge. Um, the eye contact, the verbal, um, you know, body language, going out into the community, that was huge because my kids would elope, they would run away, they would scream, they would stem on the aisles. And now my kids are like the most behaved in the <laughs> grocery stores. They know that they need to stay with mommy they don't take off, they're not stemming on the aisles, and even in the parking lot where it become a safety hazard, now they stay with me. And I can pretty much take them anywhere by myself where I could never do that before the treatments. It would, I, I wouldn't do two at a time. I would do one, but I would still be nervous. And um, they've come a long way in a short time since the treatment, and I'm so blessed that we had the opportunity to do it. And I hope that um, other parents that are watching this have the opportunity and um, seek the information to, to help their children because it's really rejuvenating their lives for a better quality of life. <laughs> Another thing with the children is um, their textile issues that they had. My kids never like to touch sand, Play-Doh, stickers. Mm -hmm. And since the treatment, we go to the beach for hours. They go in the water, they play in the sand, they wear band-aids on their mm. skin. They play with Play-Doh. They play with shaving mm. cream during therapy. Um, stickers, they love stickers. And <laughs> when we first tried to put a band-aid on one of Jack's oh. boo-boos before mm. treatment, it, I mean, he screamed so loud, I thought the whole city heard. Mm -hmm. And now I can put a Band-Aid on him and there's no issue. It's just, it's so normal I don't even think about it. And now they're flexible when it comes to even like, for instance, going to Disneyland. When we went before mm -hmm. the treatment, it was the same route every time. And if we changed the route, they would get really upset and almost like hurt themselves because they couldn't handle that. Now. Where do we want to go today? They are, and, and they're so open to it. It's not even an issue anymore. And I thought 
those things that I just said would never get better. They mm -hmm. would never change. And now I don't even think about it. And it's, we just look back and go, guy, I can't even, how did we do it? Kiddos are very, very smart and people don't realize how smart they are. They just can't verbalize their thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And that's why autism is so mysterious. And with the treatments, they, they are able to start developing on, yeah. on, a, on a fast pace. Gaining speed because along with it, when the behaviors go down and mm -hmm. they're able to touch, feel, sense, and speak, then they're able to learn quicker without behaviors. Mm -hmm. They're able to try new things, try mm -hmm. new foods, mm -hmm. try uh, different shoes. Um, you know, routine, um, I ride a bike. I, we can never get them to go on a big wheel or ride a bike, and now they do that. And, you know, when, when, you're di when you ha hear the diagnosis of your child, mm. you think, my kid's never gonna be able to do any of this. And I used to feel that way, and now it's like, I can't wait till my kid does this. You know, there's just steps that you have to take because they still have autism, but it's not who they are because they're getting better. And when your children are getting better, the parents are with that, you know, the family's with that. We're mm -hmm. all getting better because we're, we're, we're so <laughs> vibrant on the, the milestones that they're making rather than the things that they haven't done before. We're so happy, I mean, so blessed that they had the opportunity to receive this treatment because I don't know if a lot of people have that opportunity because they don't know or they are told, oh, you can't do that, it's not going to work, you know, yeah. you have to try this or there's no cure for autism, this is, you know, your kid's never yeah. going to talk and you'll just have to deal with it. I mean, it's heart-wrenching that parents are given mm. this information and, and no information with hope so I hope that this can and I'm living proof that my kids are so much better I feel like they've grown in years two or three years of um, education and behavior and they're kind of caught up to where they should be um, a year since they've received mm -hmm. treatment and they're still doing new things all the time um, they, they completely amaze us. Chad and I were having a heavy discussion in the car and Luke said, okay, that's enough you two. Oh. I don't know any six year old that <laughs> would say that that has autism. And we both started laughing and we just couldn't believe because it, it was so appropriate because yeah. he tuned in, he understood the feelings mm. and the body language. Mm. And for him to say that it was so appropriate. I think any parent out there would pay or do whatever it took to get your child better. And I and you know, they're not a hundred percent, but who is? I mean, they're children, they're evolving, yeah. they're changing, they're they're you know, understanding their body. I mean the I never thought that my kids would be potty trained, and they are. <laughs> it's always and told the magic number for kids with autism and mm -hmm. being potty trained is around 12 to 14 years of age. Mm -hmm. And I just, I could not, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that. And, and I thought, I'm going to be changing my son when he's 20 years old. I just, you know, you think the yeah. worst at times, and now... I can't believe how much money I'm saving on pull-ups because we're not <laughs> buying them anymore. It was also a little bit of leap of faith and we went for it and mm. we're so glad that we did. You know, we have, we have different children, but they're still, they're st how do I explain this? They're still Jack and Luke, yeah. you know, they still have their personality. It's just now that it's, it, it's coming out and they're so funny. They're, they laugh at the appropriate times at movies, which they never did. 
We can take them to the movies that we never could before. We went, we took our first trip last April to Arizona, six hour drive, first visit to a hotel. They did wonderful. It's another thing, restaurants, we never went out to dinner. We never would go in a restaurant because when we did, it was a nightmare. We left, you know, 20 minutes in, had to get the food to go. People are staring at us. They don't understand why our kids are behaving that way. Now we can go to a restaurant and we pinch ourselves. Like, <laughs> I can't believe, look how good they're being. Sure. We go to a restaurant and they get excited. And when we first did that, um, it had been four years since we went to a restaurant and we went to mm -hmm. A restaurant and they were wonderful they ate their food with utensils no behaviors Chad and I we just were amazed 